Decision 2023, what Mac should I buy for the studio? I'm Chuck M. I'm a music creator supporting other music creators in creating music. Hey, if you like what we're doing here, go ahead and leave a like, subscribe, all the YouTube stuff that well, I guess we're supposed to do, and um, let's get into the video. I admit it. I admit it. I'm still using Intel processors in my studio. I have a 2019 iMac with the uh, Core i9 eight core processor, and that's what I'm using for my recording studio. Now, at this point, most plugins, at least most of the plugins that I use, support Apple Silicon. So Apple announced uh, two MacBook Pros, the 14 and the 16 inch with the M2 Pro and the M2 Max. But that's not what we're gonna talk about today. The thing that interests me is the M2 Pro Mac Mini. And one that I'm considering to use in my recording studio to replace that 2019 iMac. Now, I don't need the screen. I don't, matter of fact, I don't use the iMac screen. The machine is actually outside of my studio, so I don't have fan noise while I'm mixing. So, the desktop is definitely the way to go. My original kind of plan was to wait until the M2 generation of Mac Studios comes out, but this M2 Mac Mini, mm, kind of gives me pause, or, or at least is is making me think a little bit. Um, so let's kind of look at these and let's break it down. How do I make the decision between an M1 Max Mac Studio and an M2 Pro Mac Mini? So number one is CPU performance. Now, we don't have any independent testing yet, uh, but Apple and their wonderful graphs <laughs> are claiming a 20% increase in performance for the M2 generation chips, which is pretty good because the M1s were super fast. All right, the second thing we're looking at is RAM. Now, RAM is about the same. Now, technically, the M1 Max actually has faster RAM or a little bit better performing RAM. However... The M2 Pro is so good, it, it's really, when it comes to audio recording, it's a toss up. It, it really is, they're kind of equal there. 32 gig, 32 gigs of RAM uh, is the minimum for me uh, in a studio machine for recording, in my opinion, for my workflow. Number three, IO. Now, again, here's another one where they're very similar. So the Mac Mini, for the Pro version, not for the regular M2, but the M2 Pro, has four Thunderbolt 4 ports, your HDMI port, and then two USB-A ports. Where the Mac Studio has four Thunderbolt ports, two USB-A ports, a HDMI port, and then it has two USB-Cs, non-Thunderbolt, on the front, and an SD card slot. Now, when it comes to studio work, the SD card slot really doesn't mean anything. Um, those extra two USB-Cs, kind of nice to have, um, but not a requirement, not a requirement for what I do. So I still feel like they're about even there, um, but the studio has a little bit more IO. So next, we're gonna look at thermals. Now this is a kind of an unknown. Apple didn't necessarily make any claims. We don't have any independent testing. So we don't know the thermal performance of the Mac Mini with the M2 Pro. I don't think thermals are gonna be a huge concern, but the studio I think is definitely gonna take the win there just because of, of the size of the fan and the way that's set up. Now let me say this, for audio work, maybe more than any other work, thermals are important. When you are mixing, 
especially during mixing. You are just hammering that processor, hammering that processor. And it's just constant, just mm, mm, mm. And that process is gonna produce a lot of heat, which is why Intel has had me pulling my hair out, I don't know, for the last, geez, five, six years. <laughs> As a matter of fact, I did a modification. I cut a hole in my iMac to get more airflow to keep that thing cool, okay? <laughs> I, I literally took the thing apart and cut a hole in it just to get more airflow. Um, needless to say, resale value is out the, out the door on that one. <laughs> but that's how bad Intel has been with thermals. Now, with the Apple Silicon, we're in a much better situation. All right, the last metric is price. Price. Now I'm going to move a little to the side here and put up over here the configurator. So I went through the configurator on the uh, on the M2 Pro Mac Mini, and so I'm not. I don't want the bin CPU because this is 10 core. Well, what two cores are we missing? Well, it doesn't say if we're missing the two efficient two of the four efficiency cores then it doesn't matter. But we have no way of knowing it. Now, I don't know if Apple even has a way of knowing that when they're sending those processors out. So you might you might get lucky and just lose two efficiency cores. You might get you might get unlucky and lose two performance cores. Either way, I'm not going to trust that. If I'm buying a machine for the studio, I'm going to want the 12 core variant. Now, keep in mind that is eight performance cores and four efficiency cores. So when it comes to audio production, I'm almost not counting the efficiency cores. Now they can be used um, and they are helpful, but the bulk of the work is gonna be, be done with the performance cores. So that's what I'm looking at there. Um, now 32 gigs of RAM is minimum. I do not go under a terabyte of hard drive space. Terabyte is about, I think, the sweet spot. You're backing your projects up to externals anyway, um, but having a terabyte is, is gonna have the two um, NAND chips and you're gonna get just get faster, um, faster storage that way in Mac. So when you gotta go up the food chain as far as um, the hard drives are concerned in Apple products. That base, that base one is never as fast as that second one. So terabyte uh, is the way to go. You see, we're at like twenty three hundred dollars for that machine. So it's not the five ninety nine machine that's advertised. We're looking at twenty three hundred dollars. However, let's take a look at the Mac Studio M1 Max. All right, so the M1 Max here, you see, we'll take, that bin processor is just missing video cores. Video performance is just not a consideration when I'm talking about one uh, machine that I'm gonna use in the studio. Now, if I need it to do video stuff in a pinch, that will have plenty of video performance. I'm not worried about that. If you look at that, we're gonna, again, go with the terabyte hard drive. The base is 32 gigs, the RAM is 32 gigs to base. Um, and, and we look at the configuration here, 10 gig uh, ethernet is standard on this, so that, that was an option we had to pick on the other one. And we're looking 2,200. It's actually $100 cheaper to go to the studio which is pretty crazy. But your CPU performance is down 20% from the M2 Pro. So what's the verdict? Well, for me, I think the verdict is to wait and see if I can pull the money together to get the M2 generation of the Ultra in the studio. Having 16 performance cores would be freaking awesome. It'll be the most powerful computer that I've ever had. <laughs> you know, it's not like stuff was more powerful in the past, but 
you get where I'm going at. 16 performance cores is, is unreal. If not, let's see where the uh, M2 Max falls in price-wise. Let's see if the price goes up on the studio or stays the same. So either way, I think we're going to be holding off until after WWDC. We'll be checking back in in June to update you. Till then, thanks for watching.